Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look at new holiday release for 2020 from the Xbox Game Studios and my first review on the extra downloadable content review of Gears 5 Hive Busters. Being patched up and ready to go, the Coalition has done a fantastic job listening to the gaming community on issues that needed fixing in the original Gears 5 and also updating the same game to run even better on the Xbox Series X. Needless to say, they have done an excellent job in doing so. Gears 5 Hive Busters was developed by the Coalition and released by Xbox Game Studios in late 2020 and is a single or multiplayer campaign affair. The game is a side story based on three characters, Keegan, Lonnie, and Mac, who are recruited on a secret mission and meeting each other for the very first time as Team Scorpio. If anybody sees a similarity in the name, it's because the code name for the Xbox One X was Project Scorpio. This side story, though, begins away from the big war of our current protagonist and not in a heavily populated area. The island that they land on reminds of the introduction chapter of Gears 5, but is more lush with its jungle vibe throughout the chapter. The team battles together trying to figure out the what and why reasons they are there and how to contribute. The writing is great as the banter between the team members, especially Mac, reveals their true feelings about the missions including working alongside with each other with their different personalities. I love how the short campaign was still able to flesh out and develop the characters into something more for the player. I do hope to see them again or at least hear about their future exploits in other Gears games. Oh, is it, is it just the volcano? That's another brilliant cog idea, isn't it? Throw the last of humanity into a fucking volcano. Anyway, the elevators are on the far side of the main hub. The combat is your usual gears of war affair and nothing to really write home about, which is a good thing, but playing at 60 frames per second just makes the game feel that more responsive. Playing on the Xbox Series X, the game runs smoothly with no noticeable hiccups on my playthrough, but the campaign is very short. I was able to finish the game in one sitting in about three hours total. If you're a completionist and want a challenge, there are harder difficulty levels and a bunch of hidden items throughout the game. The visuals themselves are done very nicely and bring a lot more color to the series with a jungle theme in the beginning and at the end of the DLC. Each chapter lands a different look that, the gear, that feels like a Gears game, but there are some areas where they are escaping where you have to run or slide as you progress through the story. I felt that these segments was an easy way around fighting your way out, but at least it looked frantic and done well. If you are into stealth, there is also a stealth section where you can just quietly dispatch your enemies. I failed at this since I love to run and gun and blow things up. I was able to do about three stealth kills before just going all out on the enemy. The addition of this side story is fun and well worth the visit. Just be aware that it is a sh short and sweet affair. Gears 5 Hive Busters gets an 8.0 out of 10 for its fantastic storyline with fun new characters that you will definitely fall in love with and really hope they appear in the later franchise. A little short with three hours to complete leaves this one a one night thrill ride, so bring a friend and enjoy it while it lasts. That's it for me on this episode on taking a look at the newest DCL for Gears 5. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and gray. Take us out of here, and I will see you all next upload. Hannah, above you! Nothing.
something I can't handle. Yeah.